good everybody welcome to this video for anyone confused and not sure why they're here how they even got here well I want to begin this video with a little protein moisture balance metaphor to help you understand why this video and information is so important so protein moisture balance this balance is all about feeding your hair the right foods imagine that your hair is you when do you eat you eat when you are hungry or malnourished and what happens when you eat these same exact foods each and every day? You explode. No, I'm kidding. You are going to get sick of it and you're also going to begin to lack other essential nutrients. When we have a well-balanced diet, we are healthy. And the same idea goes for our hairs. I hope that metaphor helped you understand why exactly you need a protein moisture balance. And now the rest of this video is going to continue to spell it out for you. We're gonna go in depth talking about protein moisture for dummies. We are going to dive into what protein moisture balance is, why it is so important, how to determine what your hair needs based on your texture, your elasticity, and your porosity, and how to identify what kind of product you are using. If it is a protein product, a moisture product, what these ingredients are, how to identify them, and essentially how to build a routine for your needs and your hair type. So without further ado, let's get right to it. What is protein moisture balance? So in a nutshell, protein moisture balance is a healthy state of the hair when it is both nourished and hydrated and also strengthened from both protein and moisture. Achieving protein moisture balance means that you have succeeded. You've figured out your hair routine, you're meeting your hair's needs, and your regimen meets all of the requirements for shiny, moisturized, bouncy, defined, frizz-free curls that maintain their moisture and length. Now if so, I can relate. <laughs> but I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm not trying to brag. I know you're probably watching this video because you haven't figured it out, but that's what we're getting to. By the end of this video, you should have a routine that meets your needs and understand truly my next point. Why protein and moisture balance is so important for the hair. Well, let's start with protein, my good old friend. Protein provides the hair with strengthening and repair. It is also what makes up about 91% of our hair texture. Our hair is literally made out of protein. However, as we live with our hair day to day, as we damage our hair from coloring, styling, water, literally doing anything, the protein in our hair begins to break down. If we don't treat damaged hair, it will break off. So protein in our products helps to supplement that. It helps to repair any damage being done and maintain your hair's health. Then we've got moisture, you juicy queen. Moisture is obviously so important to keep our hair lush, luxurious, juicy, and just shiny. Look at that shine. And unfortunately, when there is protein moisture imbalance, it can create unfavorable results from our styling. If we do not hydrate dry hair, it will be dull, frizzy, and eventually break off. <laughs> so we all need both, but everyone is different, which is why I'm going to explain how to analyze your hair to determine how much protein or moisture you actually need. So this is my third point, AKA how to analyze your hair to determine what it needs so you can treat it properly. Your curl pattern doesn't matter at all, period, but your texture does. And all textures require a balance to be healthy. All hair has its needs and needs change. So you need to repeatedly and regularly identify what these needs are by analyzing your hair before styling, before washing, to know how to treat it. So there are two important things to test, your elasticity and your porosity. Your hair's elasticity is how much your strand will stretch, how much bounce does it have to it, and it's determined by the moisture levels in your hair. To test this, you will pinch a strand of hair between your hands and hold it taut or toit. Then, gently tug the strand to stretch it. If the strand stretches and bounces back, it has good elasticity and good levels of moisture. If the hair isn't very flexible and doesn't stretch much or snaps while trying, the elasticity is low. I know I need moisture. However, if the strand stretches, stretches, keeps stretching and falls limp with no bounce back or then falls apart, 
it has too much moisture and poor elasticity. You might be thinking, how does that happen? Um, moisture overload. And this will likely happen if there is no protein in your routine. Now remember what I said, protein is especially good for damaged hair. Now let's talk about the stigma around damaged hair. Damaged hair is notably described as being high porosity. However, being high porosity doesn't mean that your curls are damaged. Just look at me. I have high porosity hair, but pop-in curls. High porosity just means that I have a lot of holes in my cuticle that need patching up. So how do we determine our hair's porosity? Well, porosity refers to the hair's ability to absorb and retain moisture. There are different grades of porosity and I have a full video on porosity explaining this. So check that out if you've never watched it. But in a nutshell, if we're looking at a scale, it goes from low porosity to medium porosity to high porosity. Low porosity would be a tight little cuticle that doesn't want to allow any moisture in. It typically means that the hair is pretty healthy, but it can also be quite dry because it's so tight and it doesn't really allow any moisture in. Normal porosity is pretty normal, healthy hair, AKA you're a freaking unicorn, you're flawless, don't rub it in. Normal porosity hair is usually virgin, barely colored. My sister is more normal porosity. Whereas then there's high porosity and that's, that's when you're damaged, you know? You're a little beaten and battered. There's some holes in your cuticle. Your hair will absorb lots of moisture very easily, but like a sponge, as yellow and porous as he, he will spit it back out, Bob. <laughs> I don't know what the, SpongeBob. pineapple under the sink. Pineapple under the sink. So you likely have high porosity hair if you have done a lot of coloring, a lot of bleaching, also, if you have any heat damage and high growth fatigue. And also know that even if you have virgin hair that you've never colored or done any, any chemical treatments to, you can still have a high porosity just because of the way curly hair grows out of our scalp. It's just a natural and very common trait for curly hair. Based on the descriptions, if you are unsure what porosity you have, there is a test that you can do and it has nothing to do with floating a strand in a cup of water. It has to do with taking a strand of your hair and spraying it with water and watching the absorption happen. You wanna do this on clean hair that doesn't have any product that is potentially filling your cuticle. So you can see if the water beads on your hair, it's probably low porosity, it's not getting in. And then if you have medium porosity, you'll see it gets absorbed into your hair pretty well. But if you have high porosity hair, you will probably know your hair will be so thirsty the moment you spray it, it's sucking it up and it holds onto that moisture until it dries. Now you should make note that you can have different porosities on your head as well. You can have a lower porosity at your healthy roots and higher porosity on your dry ends. But if that is the case, then always treat your hair for wherever the most damaged areas are. And to recap all of that, take a look at this chart to determine what you really need. This chart will lay everything out for you. So if you've got low porosity and low elasticity, just know that you need a lot of moisture and you really don't need a lot of protein. And I mean, the rest of the chart speaks for itself. Take this opportunity to screenshot before we move on. Because we now need to talk about where to get protein and moisture in our routine. So we're gonna get into product types and the ingredients to look out for in a moment. But first and foremost, going back to food, the number one place to get protein and moisture is through nutrition. As if you weren't told enough, stay hydrated, drink your water, and make sure you are getting enough protein in your diet because healthy hair starts from the roots. And if you are hydrated and you have protein and you have all the essential nutrients and vitamins, then you will have great hair growing out from your roots. So that's the first place to start. But again, as we wear and tear at our hair, it has other needs. And so we need to supplement them. So. Without further ado, let's talk about products and ingredients. So when you are looking for products that contain protein, most of the time the product label will let you know that it is a protein product by giving you these few buzzwords. It will usually say on the bottle, strengthening, restructuring, repairing, rebuilding. It may even say enhancing, nourishing. Those are a lot of the buzzwords. And if you see any of these ingredients, now there's a long list of ingredients. This is just a bunch of some of the most common proteins that you will find in your products. And the best way to identify these ingredients 
is to look for the actual word protein. Amino acids is another one. Hydrolyzed, if it says hydrolyzed, it's usually a hydrolyzed protein. Collagen is another one. Keratin, which is the protein our hair is actually made of. Keratin is a big one. Those are some of your key giveaways that the product has protein in it. Some protein ingredients are stronger. Some are a little more gentle. They go into the hair better and they're better accepted on finer hair textures or coarser hair textures. So for example, a lot of the vegetable proteins like wheat, rice, soy, quinoa, these all tend to form a stronger film around the hair and can be too much for low porosity hair types. But amino acids, amino acids tend to be gentler. They tend to penetrate easier into the hair. And so amino acids are a very safe place to start when you are easing into proteins. That's especially good for low porosity hair. But if you're higher than that, you don't have to really worry about which proteins you want. You want them all. You could, you, I want, I want all of the proteins. My hair does. Just take a look. And you can find these kind of ingredients in any type of product. Shampoo, conditioner, leave-in, cream, gel, mousse, serum. Proteins can be found in any type of product. They can really be found everywhere and you don't likely want them in every one of your products. You want that balance of moisture. So let's talk about the buzzwords for moisture. You can usually expect a lot of moisture out of products that have softening on the label. They will literally say moisturizing, deep moisture, hydrating, uh, avoids frizz, like, because moisture fights frizz. When your hair is moisturized, it is defined usually and it doesn't have as much frizz. Now as for moisture ingredients, I want to say most curly hair products are meant to add moisture. They usually have a lot of hydrating ingredients. There are three main ways that we hydrate the hair. Actual hydration, which is water. Water is the main thing. Then there's humectants. Our humectants are those ingredients that help bind moisture to our hair, like glycerin and hyaluronic acid. And then of course, those occlusive agents. Occlusives are ingredients that help to seal all of that in, which is so so important and we already know a lot of these ingredients we know them as oils coconut oil petroleum mineral oil lots of things like this they really help to seal all of that moisture in silicones are also conditioning polyquats fatty alcohols like cetyl alcohol cetereal alcohol behen trimonium chloride i kind of butchered how i said that but these are all conditioning ingredients that you will find in your products but remember that the first moisturizing ingredient is always water. That is where we get our true hydration. And then everything else, all of those other ingredients are about adding slip to the hair, filling in the cuticle and giving it that conditioning and shine and sealing all of it in. So now that we know how to identify all of the ingredients in our products, it's time to talk about how to finally create the perfectly balanced routine for you. Knowing all of the information we do, now that we've analyzed our hair, we've analyzed our products, how can we Put the two together and to create this routine i want you to remember that most most products for curly hair are moisturizing most products have moisture and there are many products out there that also have protein in them it's those ones that you want to look out for for me i love seeing protein in my products but depending on your hair needs you want to determine how many of your products have protein in them on this wash day. So let's take in a wash day. For any given wash day, we're probably using at least three to five products. We've got a shampoo, conditioner, mask, conditioner mask, leave-in, styling cream, gel, or, you know, mousse. You know, we've got usually around at least five products. If every single one of your products has protein in it, but you have got healthy hair, low porosity hair, then, then, then there is going to be too much protein. And you know what, it's not even that there's too much protein, there's just not enough moisture. So you don't wanna have all products with protein. And to make sure that you're not going overboard with anything, here is a chart for you to follow based on if you are low porosity, if you are medium porosity, or high porosity damaged cuticle like me, because this is gonna help you determine how much protein to incorporate in your routine. This is really where the balance comes from. So if you look at the chart, Low porosity has got very few checks, right? You want little protein, very little amongst all of your products. 
medium porosity, you can have a nice blend. You know, this is like this is like my sister's hair. She's not bleached, but she's colored, but it's still pretty healthy. And for someone with high porosity hair or extremely damaged hair, you want to make sure you're getting enough of those protein checks. Check it off your list. And try to get in the habit of understanding your hair. Continuously listen to it. Feel it up before you shower. If it feels super dry, make sure you are using a nice deep conditioner that has lots of moisture. And if it is pretty weak and feeling damaged, make sure you are using something that has protein in it. Just, but always make sure that you have both because if you don't have both and you're only using one and you're only using the other and you're getting too much, the hair will not be balanced with protein and moisture. It will both look and feel like shit. Bad, sorry, it will, it will feel bad. And it can also create more harm than do good. So keep an eye out for any of these clues. If you have protein overload and too much protein, your hair may feel very stiff, very crunchy, brittle, it can be dull. Your curls will be like stringy, frizzy rough to touch and snapping off and breaking and when there is too much moisture in the hair and not enough of protein well I mean moisture overload will often feel mushy the curls can be very limp they will not be able to hold their shape it will be very fluffy but also weighed down and frizzy so not having any definition it can also be very poofy and very soft feeling and when you brush it, it can be falling right off, right? These are all signs of poor elasticity and hair that is overly moisturized. And if any of these poor scenarios happen because you didn't listen to me, well, you know, we make mistakes. But if this does happen, very simply, if you have a protein overload, I want you to wash your hair, use a shampoo. You may also wanna clarify your hair and give yourself a good deep conditioner mask that is just very moisturizing you want to get lots of moisture in your hair you can also pre-poo with an oil if you're scared to get your hair right underwater put a heated oil over your hair to help soften it immediately and just give it a wash wash off the protein the proteins have just formed a film over your hair so you want to cleanse any buildup and you should be just fine you can slowly ease your way back into protein in your next few washes but just try to focus on moisturizing to get that balance and if your hair is overly moisturized you can rinse it out but do keep in mind that water is moisture as well so you have a few options if your hair is very very just mushy and limp try to dry out your hair like before even adding more water and rinsing it out try to dry it out use a towel to absorb excess moisture gently squeezing moisture out use a blow dryer to dry out the hair to let some of that moisture leave your hair and then Make sure you put protein on top. Make sure you are balancing it out with protein. And just like that, that's how you keep the balance. Uh, that was kind of a lot of information, but I want it to be as in-depth as possible without going too overboard and confusing you. So I hope this video has helped. If you have any further questions or any requests, leave them below. But I do want to thank you for tuning into this video. I hope this video helps you achieve your protein and moisture balance. You may already have the products to balance you out. And if not, I have so many different routines on this channel. Ones with protein, ones without protein. And I do hope that you subscribe for more and stay tuned for the next video because we put out new videos on this channel each and every week. And I hope to see you in the next one. But that's all for this week. This has been your main girl Mel. And I am out. Peace. Am I beautiful? My hair looks incredible. I've got that day one lack of volume, but that day one definition. La -ti -da, da -ti -da, da -ti -da. Yeah, that's great. I can confirm. I think so. I feel like I wanted to add more. I don't know. I don't know.